Okay, good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Amir. I uh, manage the performance in Mellanox, lead all the performance activities on all the products. Yeah, I'm currently working for the AMD. Yeah. Jim actually uh, introduced me. Uh, we worked in before. Um, now I just moved for AMD, but uh, this time actually he's gonna explain about the PCI Gen 4. So AMD platform is the first x86 server can enable that uh, PCI Gen 4. So we're gonna just show up that how it works and what the performance it is. So probably I, I, I can jump in like in the middle of somewhere, but yes. yeah, let's continue. Okay, so what's the plan? You got it? No. Okay, <clears throat> now it works. Um, so before we talk about the Gen 4 and, uh, and performance, we would like to explain about the PCI, uh, most common interface uh, today that we use. Every DPTK application starts with minus W and the PCI function, right? Um, so we'll talk about uh, PCI fundamentals and what's new in Gen 4. Uh, we'll see how the DPDK data path is used in the PCI, how packets are flowing. Um, we're going to talk about the AMD uh, CPU with uh, Gen 4 and some uh, performance results uh, that we got. Okay, PCI Express. So PCI Express uh, emerged from PCI. Uh, that was used in the 90s, um, uh, starting with the 2000 uh, by PCI SIG, emerged the PCI Express, and the main change is that uh, uh, it's high speed, higher speed, and it's a point-to-point -point, uh, protocol. Each PCI device can talk um, directly. Uh, it's a bi-directional uh, connection, it's full duplex, um, and it has um, um, and, and, and the bandwidth actually uh, determines about, about how many lanes you have. Uh, so here's, here's an example for a by 2 PCI. It actually has four lanes, two lanes for each uh, direction, transmit on two lanes, receive on two lanes, and this is the, the width. Uh, this is how it looks like in real life. Uh, 1x or by 4, by 1, uh, by 8, by 16. That's uh, all that. Um, in terms of uh, generations, sometimes generations and, and speed are uh, interchangeable. Um, so the generation is not, does not only bring speed, also bring new features. Um, so as you can see, the, from generation to generation, PCI speed was doubled. Um, from Gen 1 to Gen 2, uh, from Gen 2 to Gen 3, the, the physical error speed was actually not doubled, you see from five to eight, but the bandwidth was doubled, and this is due to uh, different uh, encoding on the wire. So the encoding now, instead of 10 bits per byte, we have eight bits per byte uh, encoding, so uh, the effective bandwidth was doubled, and we have uh, the Gen 4 spec in 2017, and Gen 5 is actually already out as well. Uh, we are looking forward to that, I think, next year or some, we're going to see some uh, products next year or, or a year after. <laughs> okay, so um, the layers of PCI. We have the physical layer, which is a link. Um, so that determines the link speed and the liquid, link width. Uh, that, uh, that, from that, you can understand how much bandwidth you can uh, utilize the PCI. Data link layer, um, this is the uh, layer that control uh, the, uh, the flow control. PCI is a lossless fabric. It uses a credit-based uh, flow control. It means that uh, you need a credit to, you, you get credits from the other side, from the other link. Uh, you have header credits and data credits. You need at least one header credits to post a packet. You need at least, uh, one, um, well, data credits is about 16 bytes for every one uh, data you want to transfer. Uh, these packets are called uh, DLLPs, and that's the flow control uh, layer. The most interesting layer is the transaction layer. 
or the packets which are called TLPs, the transaction layer packets. Um, this is the actual data you want to send on the PCI. Uh, this is what we are here for, uh, driving traffic and packets and whatever you want to uh, do with the PCI. This, uh, this, of course, is true for network adapters, um, SSD controllers and VME, um, any other uh, IO device, crypto device, it always uh, it behaves the same, GPUs. Okay, um, so we're going over, going over the different TLPs, different operation you can do in the PCI. The first thing, uh, operation is write. Um, write is a posted operation, it's a fire and forget. Um, you just write to an address and you don't have to wait for it for the completion. The completion of the packet is in the lower layer for the flow control, in the DLLP uh, layer. Um, the maximum you can transmit, uh, PCI has an MTU. It's called max payload size. Um, the common ones are 256 bytes and 512. Um, it can be, the write can be from PCI to memory, can be from PCI to PCI, can be from CPU to PCI. Any endpoint of the PCI can uh, transfer a, a write uh, transaction. All you have to do is post the address and the length in the header, and the transaction will be uh, delivered. Read request and completion. So read request uh, is a non-posted operation. That's that is how it's called in the PCI. It means that uh, you need to wait for a completion. You post a read request, one read request for large data, um, and they, you get the completions which are, can be actually out of order. Uh, and the completions, the, the read request is up to 4K. Uh, it depends on the <coughs> configuration. I will talk about it uh, later. So you can request up to 4K bytes, and the completions are going to uh, be returned in uh, max payload size or MTU size in MTU uh, chunks. So let's say you're asking for 4K uh, bytes and the, your max payload is uh, 512. So you'll get eight chunks back in the PCI um, of completions. Tags. Um, so because reads are out of order and, you want, and every read request has number of completions, you need to know, you need to match the request will need to match the tag, the read request to the completions. So it uses a tag. Uh, the default is five bit tag, and um, it, it, the read request is being tagged with a, a number, you know, and the, complete, the completions are tagged with the same uh, number, and then um, all the completions will have the same tag, and the requester can match those completions to the read request, and um, then the operation of the read will be uh, completed. Okay, PCI capabilities. Um, PCI has uh, some uh, many capabilities, and I'm going to talk about the capabilities that relates to performance and how to see what you have on your system, and some suggestions of how to uh, what to enable when you want high performance. So with LSPCI minus uh, VV, you'll see uh, this. Uh, you see the PCI function and its capabilities. This is the nice, uh, um, this is in, in the text mode. You can also see it in uh, you know, uh, the raw data with minus X. And the basic thing you will see is first uh, the link. You can see the capability of the link. This is reported by the device. Um, what is the capability of the link in terms of uh, speed and width. And this is the actual um, status. So if you put your device on the wrong slot or something wrong in the BIOS or something wrong happened, uh, you can see difference between the actual status and uh, the, the capability of the link speed. And then you need to fix it. Max payload size, we've talked about it. Uh, a few minutes ago. Uh, this is the maximum uh, payload you can use. You can see the capability and the current 
status. Um, and this actually defines how well you're utilizing the PCI. Uh, with 500 bytes of max payload size, you can utilize 96% of the PCI uh, because each PCI packet has at least something like 20 bytes uh, header. Uh, so um, it, it being calculated to 96%. Uh, if you use less than that, 256 or 128, you get uh, underutilized the PCI. It could be 90%, 80%. Um, so in this case, higher is better. Max read request. Um, this is uh, uh, the, large, uh, the, larger, the largest max read request allowed by the device. And uh, basically, uh, you want to enlarge it as much as possible if you have um, large read requests. You will have less reads. <clears throat> um, you will need less reads for the same data. Um, so mo in most cases, you want to have this uh, large as possible. And this is uh, uh, configurable by the set PCI with uh, this bit enabled. So 5 is 4K, 4 is 2K, 3 1K, and so on. Um, there are some cases where larger PCI, larger read requests will cause higher latency. But that depends on the chips that you're working with and uh, the overall system. So it is something to be tuned. Extended tag. Um, again, we have capability and control and what's the status. Uh, so extended tags extend the tag field in the uh, mm. TLP header from 5 bits to 8 bits. This allows uh, more outstanding reads um, if you have only 32-bit tag, it means you can only have, so, sorry, 5-bit tag, it means all, you can only use 32 outstanding reads, and then you, ha you have to wait for a, the, last, the first completion in order to issue another read. Um, if you have 8-bit tags, you can issue 256 uh, outstanding reads, and this, of course, improves the parallelism and performance of the PCI. And this was introduced in uh, Gen 3 um, in order to, uh, um, to achieve the bandwidth needed from, uh, from 100 gig uh, per second. Relaxed ordering. PCI has ordering rules. Um, there are, the basic thing is that uh, write cannot bypass write, read cannot pass pass bypass write. Uh, of course, all reads are out of order. And if you enable relaxed ordering and you use it actually in the device, it allows the system, the chipset, uh, to reorder some of the packets and handle all the, uh, the IOQ, the PCIQ, handle it more efficient. Um, so th this is actually the indication of relaxed ordering is actually per packet. Uh, so it is controlled by the device and software uh, actually to, to enable it. So, yep. Okay, what's new in Gen 4? Uh, except for the speed, the speed is uh, 16 gigabit uh, per second. If you have 16 lanes, it's 200, 256 uh, gigabit per second per direction. Uh, that's for the speed. Uh, but two, um, two features that uh, uh, enable to achieve this speed, or maybe on high load you will need them, um, are one is the 10-bit tags. Uh, so we said that uh, the extended tag extends from 5 bits to 8 bits, and 10-bit extends to 10 bits. Uh, this uh, allows um, effectively it's 700. Um, outstanding reads, 768, because there's some combination of two bits that cannot be used. Um, we, the PCI spec took two bits which were reserved and uh, used that for, the, for extending the, the tags. But zero, zero cannot be used, so this is why you have 768 outstanding. We will need this as bandwidth will go, the bandwidth demand will go up in the PCI. We will need the, to use that. Another feature in the PCI is a scaled uh, flow control. So when a link is uh, negotiated, um, you, each, each uh, 
endpoint of the PCI, publish how much credit it has. And there's a, uh, without this feature, we have a limitation. Uh, let's say for header credits, only 127. Uh, so the scaled flow control, similar to TCP uh, window size scaling, um, it has uh, a scale factor on top of the, of the header credits that is being published. Uh, so effectively, you can increase your PCI buffer to absorb uh, the latency that incurred, that introduced with the higher bandwidth uh, demands. For example, the max, max data buffer um, without scaled flow control is limited to 32K, and with this one, it could be 500K, <coughs> 5, 512K bytes. Okay. Okay, how does it look in, when you're running DPDK application? How it, does it look in the PCI? So we have the PCI link and the network link. And you're running, let's say, the SPMD forwarding. Um, so it all starts with a packet being arrived in the network port. The NIC receives it, and then it needs to read the descriptor for where to put the packet. So it issues a read request. Um, a read request, usually the descriptor is something small, so you get one completion with the read request and then it writes the packet, writes the packet. Um, so where it writes the packet? Anyone? Okay, we have mbuff, right? The basic uh, uh, buffer. Um, this is uh, where you write the packet, and it, it has to write the packet in order. So at the 1500, 1518 bytes will be 512 packet over max payload size, another one and another uh, smaller one which when you remove CRC, it will be 1514. Uh, then it needs to write the completion to indicate the software that packet is packet arrived. So it issue a write request again. Um, in Mellanox, we call it uh, CQE or cookie, uh, if we have here. And this goes to the RX uh, completion queue. So um, what waits there is the polling. Uh, poll mode driver, right? This is what it does. So uh, the software already polling on the completion, and when the completion uh, arrives to the completion queue, then the software knows we have a packet and continues to process it. In our example, uh, right, test PMD, IO forward, uh, we continue to transmit it. So we take the same packet, we write a PCI. PCI write, we write some doorbell indication that we have a packet to transmit. Uh, we issue a read request for that descriptor. We get the completion. And then we issue a read request to get the packet. Now we need to get the packet. The packet is uh, larger than max payload in this case. So it will be um, returned in three, uh, or at least three um, completions. And they can be out of order, uh, like the last one can be last or first or the middle. The NIC or any other device can, needs, to be, uh, needs to handle this out of orderness and eventually transmit the packet into the, into the port at CRC and transmit it in order. Um, that's how we transmit <laughs> packets in the PCI. So we'll go over to Kisang. Yeah. So maybe this time I can jump in. Uh, it'll be really helpful to understand. Later on, he's going to bring up the test report, basically, what the performance actually achieved by the uh, PCI Gen 4 using Mellanox 100 gig, uh, basically 200 gig uh, dual port. So um, I think it'll be helpful to understand uh, how it actually worked in terms of CPU handling the um, uh, all the um, PCI bus I/O uh, packet uh, in and out. So, can I get you? Yes. So this is uh, um, AMD Epic uh, server processors um, layout. Um, it was dated back to like 2017. It was the first x86 um, server server processors based on the multi multi-chip uh, die architecture. 
Um, now it has been actually we released in three months ago. Uh, basically, it's much improved uh, Infinity Infi, uh, Infinity Fabric that uh, between the CPU cores you see you see that uh, on the left side and right side in the middle there's an IO die. IO die will pretty much like handling all the traffic basically uh, memory and uh, memory and also PCI PCI IO um, that actually improve the uh, overall like um, before silicon the like electrical uh, kind of limit so um, when when you have a large number of cores it was ha having a lot of um, you know difficulties actually physically and also uh, the uh, monolithically that um, that has been addressed by the multi chip architectures um, Besides that, uh, all other like marketing terms, it's the highest cores in the in the industry right now. It's 64 cores, and also the increase in the, uh, increased uh, shared uh, L2 and L3 memory cache that will allow to you know um, handle the, all the um, packet traffic, and also the memory uh, support like uh, eight channel memory bandwidth that will allow to have 3,200 DIMMs. Um, which it doesn't really, is, is, which is actually first um, in the industry enable 3200 uh, memory DIMMs as well, which will contribute to the performance as well. And then um, lastly, the, but more importantly, it just support the uh, PCI Gen 4. That's why I'm here and then just uh, working with the Melanox to how it performs um, in terms of the PCI Gen 4, not only the bandwidth, but then how can we get the um, uh, most benefit out of these uh, architectures. So this one, uh, this is, I, I don't have a lot of time, but then um, you guys are familiar with the NUMA topology, right? So um, traditionally, NUMA basically circuit-based, but um, in this uh, EPIC uh, 7002 series processors, probably you can create um, four different uh, NUMA uh, options, basically. And uh, MPS1 means uh, NUMA per circuit, which is one means like a one NUMA pulse socket, which is traditionally monolithic uh, socket architecture. We have single socket have a one single NUMA architecture, uh, single NUMA domain. So pretty much the same thing. If you have 2P, that's how it uh, lay out here. NUMA 1, NUMA 2, which resign the same uh, in the socket level. Um, the between the socket, there is a QPI in the Intel terms, and AMD is pretty much X, uh, XGMI. Um, but they're pretty much the same thing, inter-socket tra uh, traffic and memory, um, um, uh, memory, memory interleaving. Um, so in this case, you can, we can talk about the sync, like two NUMA domain uh, per system. But when it comes to uh, NUMA node uh, MPS2, which is a NUMA node per socket two, number two means you can have two NUMA zone uh, basically within the socket. So as you see in the diagram, there are eight different little like a tr um, um, square that, that's representing the uh, core, cache core, uh, which is like uh, consists of four different um, CPU cores. So there are eight of this uh, CCD, uh, cache, cache core die, and uh, as you see in the, it divided into two parts. The left side and right side, all actually handling those uh, four different uh, memory channels, and then uh, as well as the uh, PCI bus, which is uh, located. If you see the basically using the uh, LS um, uh, LS topo, that command actually show the uh, NUMA topology. You can see that actually um, the the PCI where when you plug in the PCI <coughs> devices, you will see that where the PCI device belong to, right? So based on this kind of a two NUMA node per socket, you can kind of optimize your data path and also memory bandwidth as well as the PCI uh, bus location. Um, so we actually see that uh, MPS2, he gonna actually bring up the test report. MPS2 was the you know, highest throughput we can achieve, which is optimal uh, NUMA topology in this case. Uh, but when it comes to the on the right side, there is a the little more um, you know, NUMA topology complexity, 
uh, which is divided into four. So each socket has a four NUMA node, uh, which is representing two, uh, two actually memory uh, bandwidth, memory, uh, memory channel. And uh, the particular um, PCI device, when you plug into your board, like uh, it depends on you know, the server configuration, but um, let's say you have four um, NIC cards plugged into your uh, server, server board, basically uh, one, um, each NIC can dedicate to the, uh, each NUMA, do NUMA domain. So you can get the um, um, most benefit out of this uh, NUMA affinity. Uh, which means like uh, even though we, we, we see that a slight, a very uh, uh, um, minimum kind of latency uh, discrepancy, but uh, which is still you can take the full advantage of this uh, NUMA node, uh, local NUMA node affinity uh, by using the MPS4. So in, in our case, basically MPS4 was the best uh, situation to bring up the uh, multiple NICs. Like if you have more than three NICs plugged into your system, in uh, AMD Epic, uh, Epic platform, basically you can have 200 gig uh, NIC card plugged into like, uh, your system uh, by like, four. So that means you can have, you can push like 800 um, uh, gigabps um, on the single socket. So in this case, MP MPS4 was the best situation when you, when you do the aggregating the bandwidth. Although the MPS4 will be limit that band, uh, memory bandwidth, as you see that there's only two channel will be kind of uh, uh, occupied, right? So uh, there will be uh, some memory bandwidth limit, but still when you come to the multiple uh, NIC card, you'll get the best performance out of it. So let's talk about the, how, how we achieve the performance. Yes, um, so uh, we wanted to see how much we can uh, uh, get from a single NIC and with the PCI Gen 4. So we got one system configured to NPS2, uh, running test PMD IO forwarding on one of the, on the local uh, NUMA uh, of the device with two, uh, two, two, two 100 gig uh, ports running bidirectional. And we got uh, full line rate in uh, large frames, um, uh, 200 gigabit per direction, and over 200 million uh, packets per second uh, with uh, 64 byte. This is with a single NIC um, that uh, is placed on, on one PCI slot. Additional uh, uh, test that uh, we did is uh, running three NICs, uh, each one on a different, uh, with, this is with NPS4, each one on its own local uh, NUMA node, running a VM with SRIOV, and again, test PMD with uh, MaxWap, and we use the virtual function, uh, uni unidirectional traffic, each, again, with uh, six ports of uh, PCI, so we have three NICs of 100 gig, and we got uh, 300 gigabit into the system and out of the system on large frames, and uh, about 350 million packets per second um, for uh, 64 bytes. That's it. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, thank you for sharing. Uh, uh, one question is about uh, you showing the uh, performance uh, 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 metrics. So the question is, uh, how much course call counts are you spending to reach that 100, uh, the full PCI Gen 4 by 16 rate, packet rate? So for uh, 64 bytes, uh, we used uh, between eight to 16 cores. Actually, eight was enough. Eight was enough uh, to achieve uh, uh, 180 million, and we increase it uh, further to um, 16 cores to get uh, 210 million packs per second. For the large frames, we didn't have to use many cores. Um, yeah, in this case, it's a, the CPU wasn't a bottleneck. Yeah. Instead, of the memory bandwidth was bottleneck. So that's why you don't need uh, more than eight cores to achieve the 100%. The main impact on performance for 200 gig was uh, actually not uh, the core CPU. 
is actually the PCI. Uh, the better latency that you have, the tuning of exactly what we've talked about, the large, large read request, extended tag, and all of that. This what, uh, and, and, and utilizing all your control objects, like TX descriptor, ARC descriptor, uh, maximizing the PCI with them, with these objects, this is what leads to uh, uh, utilizing all the PCI bandwidth that you, that you can get from the Gen4. Anyone else? Yep. Uh, do you have any data about the packet loss uh, across the PCI slot? Uh, I'm experiencing, I feel like experiencing uh, packet loss in uh, PCI Gen 3, but uh, I expect it's going to be more better in the PCI Gen 4. So. You mean packet loss on the PCI level or the network level? I think I, uh, his question is, compared to the PCI Gen 3, mm -hmm. he sees some of the packet loss. But then, uh, compared to PCI Gen 3, do you see more packet loss because of the higher bandwidth? No. Well, more in general, uh, do you uh, test? Uh, is there any packet loss uh, across the PCI slots uh, case? You mean uh, between, between, if we have two PCIs? And you're running between them? Yeah. Through, through the CPU with uh, the PDK? Through the, yes, yes. Um, well, if it's on the same local uh, NUMA node, it's, it will behave the same. Um, uh, with, with the AMD, it's also uh, their, local, their remote NUMA node is also very close. It's not that remote because it's using like uh, the XGMI, right, something, the PCI, that, uh, that, that the latency is much much better. Um, this, the testing that uh, we've done is with 0.1% uh, uh, acceptable packet loss. So um, I don't know if I answer your question. But. Yeah, uh, that's uh, great. Thank you. Uh, but uh, we are in the ISP, and uh, uh, some of our customer is very you know, serious about the packet loss. Even in mm -hmm. the 0.01 packet loss is kind of like, a, you know, Deemed as an issue. So. Yes. So I, I believe that we can achieve zero packet loss uh, without any issue. It's a matter of tuning more of the system. Uh, you know, the Linux uh, um, isolated CPUs and the interrupts and all that. Uh, we didn't saw a lot of packet loss in this, in this testing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, hello. Uh, one question is about uh, the local socket and the cross socket performance difference. If you are using the same uh, resource, uh, you know, for the memory, the cores, uh, what's the performance uh, difference to reach the maximum NIC? So, for example, if you are on the local uh, socket, and another case is the cross socket. What's the performance? Uh... Degradation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely there will be some uh, degradation, and there's a penalty, right? Latency penalty. Not only that, but also you, you're going to go through different data paths, which will, uh, have, will cause a lot of cache miss as well, right? So it depends on your application. But our case, uh, uh, we see pretty much like uh, 20 to 25 percent uh, degradation inter socket kind of traffic so that's why in order to achieve uh, our highest throughput uh, we can get is from like numa affinity you need to have that it, um, uh, either you're gonna go for the mps1 which means you have all the traffic kind of terminated uh, on the single numa uh, single socket base or you can have like multiple numa but still within the socket that's the best that's the way uh, handled handle the traffic internally. Thank you. Quick question. Hi, Edwin for Plank Intel. Great talk. Thank you. Um, do you support um, TLP hints in the PCI Express device? Uh, we support in the in the Connectix uh, five and above. We support TLP hints. Um, it, do you support it in the AMD CPU? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we support it. Um, I don't think it's yet exposed, but um, yep, yeah, we do. Thank you. I think uh, okay. time's up, but then you can always free, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'll be just hang out.
Yes, I'm here as well. Thank, Thank you. you again. Thank you.